Hello everyone, I'm Eric kc 9 asc and I'm going to talk a little bit today about Meshtastic. Uh, before I begin, uh, I know that those that have been following the channel have not been seeing consistent posts, and uh, a lot of the videos have not been uploaded recently because of Hurricane Helene. So this is one of my first videos since Hurricane Helene, uh, besides a couple of the shorts that I recorded on my phone. And today I want to talk about Meshtastic, and... Um, during the hurricane and even during the uh, aftermath, uh, it was a tool that I was able to use to keep in contact with a few different hams and we were able to check on each other. Now, it's not going to replace your existing phone service, uh, but it is a good off-grid decentralized mesh network. And then, as you can see, I have the uh, Meshtastic website pulled up. It's meshtastic.org. It's an open source project. Uh, I really see... A necessity for hams to have this available to them the reason being is uh, you know once you have a disaster ridden area you're not going to recognize a lot of the locations you know you don't have the street names or you don't have the cell service you don't have the uh, the mapping that you would normally have on your cell phone so this decentralized system that Mishtastic is it replaces that you, know, you can talk point to point so if you're near someone else you can talk to them uh, and if someone else is near them you can talk to them also these the the mesh concept as long as you're near one of these nodes uh, your traffic can be sent through that other node to the final destination it needs to go to so there are some limitations with it it does send text messages it sends locations you can see on a map where the nodes are located uh, but you know, due to the lack of reliable communications after Hurricane Helene, I see that this is something that's definitely viable for the amateur radio community, along with your regular RF communications, but this is additional uh, information. So it goes beyond line of sight and uh, uses a technology called LoRaWAN, uh, which is a long-range WAN, it's a wide area network. And it works on the 915 megahertz band. So a lot of the equipment that is used for this mesh testing network is affordable and it's, it's low priced. It uh, doesn't require a whole lot to get into the hobby. So uh, it is available for both hams and uh, licensed and non-licensed. Uh, for the for hams, we have a little bit more capability as far as power, um, and we use an unencrypted network as as we do for ham radio purposes. But for non-ham radio purposes, it's a little bit less power, uh, and encryption is allowed. So again. Here's the uh, the website, as you can see, Meshtastic. And uh, I'm going to take you through some of the notes that they have on here. Rather than creating another presentation, the information is already here, so we're going to use what, what they have, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, as I mentioned before, Meshtastic is a project that lets you use inexpensive lower radios. So they have a diagram on the website, and I'm going to show you what they're talking about here. Uh, as you can see, off to the left here you see what looks like a, a cell phone it could be an Android phone it could be an iPhone it doesn't really matter as long as it has Bluetooth capability it can talk to one of these mesh nodes and the mesh node is simply just a, a device that will take whatever traffic it receives via Bluetooth and send it out over that LoRa network it's different than your home Wi-Fi your home Wi-Fi uses the 2.4 gigahertz band and the 5 gigahertz band uh, this operates on 915 megahertz and these devices can all talk to each other as long as they're within range of each other so if you have one that's set up like a repeater or a, a, a like a base station and you have a, a, a large external antenna connected to it you know it's something that will get you a lot more range and those other handheld devices or portable devices or even mobile uh, they'll be able to use that to extend the range of their capabilities so in the urban setting we're looking at roughly about three miles of range and in a rural setting you're looking at about nine miles of range so it, it's again it's a line of sight uh, it does a little bit beyond line of sight and if you can remember the old uh, the old Nextel phones it's a similar band uh, that they operate on even the old cordless phones there was a 900 megahertz I think back then they used to call them spread spectrum uh, there's other 
there's other devices, including ham radio operators, that also share this band. Um, ham radio operators use the 902 to 928 megahertz band, which is known as 33 centimeters in the U.S. Um, I know that other countries have different uh, capabilities, but I'm going to primarily talk about the U.S. Uh, because that's where I'm currently at, and that's where I'm a licensed amateur radio operator, so I'm not an expert at the other uh, the other countries and uh, the other frequencies, but uh, this is a technology that you can use in other countries as well. I'm sure that you'll have to change the frequencies accordingly based off of whatever their guidance is for the mesh networks. So going back to the overview, uh, it, it relays radio traffic, so you, you can send information to these nodes via the Bluetooth, or you can actually connect it to Wi-Fi, you know, not necessarily to Internet, but you can access the device through Wi-Fi uh, or even a serial connection. And it'll rebroadcast those messages up to three times, so it'll go from you to another node uh, to a destination. So the reason why there's a hop limit on there is because once you start to get uh, multiple hops on there, it's rebroadcasting that message it'll create problems in the network and possibly you know you'll you'll deal with looping and other things like that so it's recommended that you use the uh, the three hop limit so mesh stick is not LoRaWAN LoRaWAN is a little bit different and LoRaWAN is actually creating a wireless network um mesh tastic is a competitor with several of the other uh, internet of things protocols and what it does is it's able to send messages back and forth uh, there are power limits again so if you're a amateur radio operator you can set it to where ham radio um, is licensed is true and you'll have a little bit more capability so it's currently got a mesh algorithm and you can view the, the video on the website the mesh algorithm allows these devices to connect to each other and it's able to hop between connections if you are using encryption, it does use AES-256, so you are able to have encrypted uh, connections. However, if you are able to, I mean, that does affect the size of your payload also. Um, so if you are using encryption, uh, remember that that is also additional data that is being sent over the network. So if you're just sending regular traffic back and forth, um, and if you're using it as an amateur radio operator, you're not going to want to use the encryption. You're going to want to just send the information that way. So one of the records that is actually documented right now, uh, there's a guy by the name of Martin, and uh, he has a 205-mile ground record. That's ground to ground. Uh, ground to air, currently the record for that one is 128 miles, and that was done by somebody by the name of Star Watcher. Uh, who knows? Maybe you, you'll be able to break the next record, and it'll be your information that's posted on the MeshTastic website. So these are the guys that run the project. Now, if you wish to contribute, there's information on their website on how you can contribute. Uh, you can currently use uh, MeshTastic with the MeshTastic plugin, which is available for iOS and also for Android. Uh, I know that there are some implementations of ATAC. I'm not going to talk about that in this video because I believe that that, that is a completely separate topic, and I'm just now uh, getting involved with some of the ATAC. Um, so, it, well, all that is is it uh, has map overlays and it's got additional features. Uh, but as far as getting started, you have uh, the device itself, you have serial drivers to communicate with the device, uh, and there's firmware that's, in, that's involved. There's also pre-made devices that people are selling. You can find them on Amazon, you find them on eBay. Uh, you can just do a search on Google and, and type in MeshTastic and you'll find the nodes there as well. So you, you have all kinds of different hardware available to you that people are developing. Um, if you do run your MeshTastic node on your home network and you're, you're connecting to it via Wi-Fi, uh, you also have a web client that's available that you can use. So you can access that with MeshTastic.local from your wireless node that is connected to your home Wi-Fi. Overall, uh, there's many different ways that you can connect to these devices and whichever way works best for you I tend to use a lot of the portable uh, configurations so I use a lot of Bluetooth with my wireless uh, MeshTastic node so I connect to that and I open up the application on my mobile device in my case I have a, uh, an iPhone so I use it for iOS and 
I'm actually able to connect, I'm going back to the demonstration page here, I'm actually able to connect and send my messages through my phone to the LoRa network, as you can see on my cursor. So this is, if this is my phone, I'm connected via Bluetooth and only through Bluetooth, and I'm able to communicate with the network that way. So I'm able to send traffic from one node to another node to another node. Um, and if I am out of range, completely out of range, and I, I wish to, I can run what's called an MQTT server. And all, what that does is it shares the internet that's on my phone, and I'm able to send my traffic through that. And another node that has MQTT enabled is able to send my traffic into this network. So it's a, it, it bridges networks. That's what it's for. Uh, it's a it's another protocol. But I wanted to leave this graphic up to show you that you can use different types of devices to connect to the LoRaWAN network. Uh, I'm sorry, not LoRaWAN, but the MeshTastic network using the LoRa radios that operate on the 915 megahertz band. I hope this has been helpful for you, and uh, thank you guys for watching these videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and support the channel by sharing this video with someone else. Thank you again for your time, and we hope that you enjoy. Let us know how we did in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.